So we're kicking off this Monday edition of the Sportsmax Zone with football. Argentina claimed a record 16th hold on the Copa America on Sunday after beating Colombia 1-0 in what was a fierce and tense encounter which went into extra time. Many Argentinian fans were left bereft of much hope by the 66th minute following a slow start to the match and their talisman and captain Lionel Messi being forced off due to an injury. But a strong defensive effort and a 112th minute winner from the tournament's top scorer, Lautaro Martinez, secured another hold on the trophy and back-to-back -back titles for the first time in over 30 years. With us to review the 47th Copa America final, our football analyst Brent Sancho and Juan G. Arango. Uh, let's start with, with Brent. Um, Colombia went into this game, Brent, as we had discussed on Friday, with an unbeaten 28-game run. They weren't able to make it 29, crucially for them. Um, what did they do wrong? Or was it that Argentina were just better on the night? I think it's a tale of substitutions, really, Lance. Uh, when you look at uh, the form of the game, the first 15, 20 minutes, Colombia was well on top. In fact, for the first half, they created a couple of opportunities that maybe they should have gone ahead with. Uh, but then as the game wore on, we did talk to, about it a little bit last week. Maybe a bit of fatigue coming up from the Uruguay game when we got into the latter stages. But I think the changes that were made, both from a positive and a negative, I think from a negative perspective for Colombia, their substitutions never really got into the game. And then from a positive perspective for Argentina, certainly their subs uh, not only got into the game, but were very influential in the, in the direction that the game eventually went on. Uh, interesting to note, as mentioned, of course, they had a messy leave in the field uh, into the second half, uh, which, of course, <laughs> which many people might not uh, uh, want to hear, but uh, it, it brought Argentina to life. They seemed a bit more livelier uh, moving forward, a little bit more dynamic in the way they approached the game, uh, and eventually they went away. I think Colombia blew a big, big opportunity here because the way the game started, they really should have gone on to win it. They just didn't put away their chances. Yeah, and Juan, um, Brent just mentioned it. Um, substitutes key for Argentina, uh, Lautaro Martinez, the goal scorer, and the two passes that assisted the goal uh, came from players who were coming off the bench. Oh, I well, don't think we have um, uh, Juan Arango quite lined up, but Brent, maybe you can comment on that because you made the point and I was just putting in the, 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 the <laughs> linking the dots to suggest that you are, you are right about the substitutes and the impact they had in the result. Yeah, I, I, I know last week we, we did uh, touch on the fact that uh, maybe the Uruguay game took a lot out of uh, Colombia, of course, uh, going uh, 45 minutes plus uh, down with uh, 10 men. And, of course, losing a, a big player, uh, one of their better performers in Munoz, uh, who did not partake in the in in final, had some adjustments to make tactically. But that being said, of course, as I mentioned, I did think they did, in, they did enough initially in the game against Argentina uh, to, to get on the scoreboard, at least they didn't uh, take those opportunity. And as the game wore on, uh, and Argentina made those subs to really give them an input. As first Gonzalez came in up, coming on for, uh, of course, um, uh, Lionel Messi, who started now to run around and be a little bit more proactive and, and stretch Colombia a little bit more, stifle it, the, the midfield of the park a bit. And then that triple change and and uh, Lucel sold Paredes. And of course, they ventured uh, eventually the goal scorer Toro Martinez. And uh, significantly enough. Uh, the goal came from a tackle from Paredes, the passes uh, from La Celso into the part where Lautaro Martinez, who finished it, and, and really that's all she wrote. And if you compare that to the substitutes that came on for Colombia, who looked a bit disjointed when their subs came on, uh, it really was the tail of the game. Right, and you know, Brent, we have one now. One, good afternoon. Are you with us? Hey, how are you? 
I'm doing fine. You know, it's a great um, Monday for me. I predicted Spain and I wanted Argentina to win. So right now I feel mm -hmm. like a super champion. But before you joined us, right, Brent was making the point, uh, one, that, you know, he brought down the game to substitution <coughs> because Colombia in their instance did not make the right substitutions. And he was pointing to, you know, Argentina making key substitutions. For example, Lotaro Martinez coming off the bench and getting that goal for his team. What's your take on what he said? Well, that's what made him. It's not just his, his substitution. The three guys that came on at the same time were involved in, in the goal. Le Chelsea was the one that steals the ball in the midfield. Then uh, Paredes is the one that sets the first time ball. Excuse me. Paredes is the one that recovers that ball after Kevin Castaño's running in the midfield. The one that ends up setting the pass is Le Chelsea, And then Le Chelsea is sending the ball to Lautaro Martinez. So right there... That tells you everything you need to know about how the game, the tide turned in that match. Also, the pedigree in the substitution, because on the other end, you had one for Quintero, and then you had, uh, th then you had Quintero, you had uh, Carrascal, and then you had Borja come on, who basically didn't do He fought and he played more than he played football on, on the day in terms of, of what he was able to do. But, but Colombia, you have to give a lot of credit to Argentina because... At one point, you thought that many were starting to think, hey, you know what, this could be Colombia's turn when, Le when Leo Messi comes off and he's injured. But then you end up seeing the pedigree of the team. It's no longer Messi's team, if you will. He ends up leaving, and the team plays stronger. They have more opportunities in goal. They have better opportunities in goal. Keep in mind, there was a shot. I forgot it was. It, it, um, I think it was... Um, God, I'm trying to, I, I can't recall who was the one that took the shot that, that uh, Vargas was able to make a save in, in, in the second half. But overall, it, they played better than Colombia for a good portion of the second half and going into extra time as well. Yeah, and you know, Brent was very blatant to say that he felt when Messi left the pitch, the team, of course, played a lot better. Do you agree with him, mm -hmm. Juan? And um, can you comment on, apart from the substitution issue, what other factors would have caused Colombia to look a shadow of themselves? Because a lot of people felt Colombia mm -hmm. would put up a massive threat against Argentina. I didn't see that threat. There was fight. One thing is fighting, one thing is threatening. I mean, you, you can battle in the midfield, but they're not creating anything in front of goal. And that, that was the case early on in the first half. We saw Colombia have a couple of shots. Cordova ends up missing uh, a volley by just inches of the post. But you know what? Those three, there, there's three things that I'll tell you off, right off the top of my head. Colombia were the best team in the air. They scored five times off the of set pieces, crosses, whatever case may be. This is where you start to see Dibu Martinez at his best because he was able to shut down. That. Every time there was a corner, Dibu Martinez is able to come off his line, grab the ball, no threat at all, number one. Rodrigo de Paul may be one of the most underrated footballers in the world, the way he was able to shut down Luis Diaz. Because Diaz would have to scurry, find the ball, go down the line, have to turn back around, and Depot was there to, to really neutralize him. And when you see that, that ends up being a difference. But you know who the biggest game changer was? It was Nico Gonzalez. Nico Gonzalez comes onto the, comes onto the match, and you saw a team that offered a bit more depth had fresher lungs, and created more for Argentina when, when everything was going through. And, of course, he missed a couple of key opportunities, yeah. but he really changed the dynamic for Argentina as well. Yeah, and, you know, Brent, um, of course, Juan mentions Nico Gonzalez, but I feel like it's only fitting that we mention the man Angel de Maria. It was his final match for Argentina. And just I want to spend some time commenting on, one, what he contributed to this match. And I'm thinking leadership, just having him on the pitch, especially when Lionel Messi had to exit in such a heartbreaking manner. Just having him as part of the team. And now, moving forward, you notice there's a changing of the guard because we're not sure if Messi is going to play for Argentina again. We'll have to await reports and everything with regards to his injury. And then Angel de Maria, a goodbye for him as well. Yeah, and what a, an excellent way uh, to leave the, the, the national team, uh, winning one of the biggest uh, trophies on stake as a player. Uh, and he was outstanding in the night. You're right. He, from a leadership perspective, he stood up and he was counted. There was times in the first half where Colombia was starting to press 
uh, and, and caused a difficulty for Argentina. He, he held the ball in, in, in the right spaces. He kept them ticking. Uh, and in the second half, he came to life and he really started to, to have a go uh, at the Colombia back four. So all in all, a, a terrific contribution in the time that he stayed on the park. Uh, I thought he, throughout the tournament, contributed positively and has. When you look at the, the trophies that uh, Argentina, and I'm going beyond this football match now, have won, a lot of it has an ingredient called Angel de Maria. And uh, you really have to wonder moving forward. Of course, it's it's not so much about replacing him because I think he's a, one of those irreplaceable players. Yes. But I think he's al always, always trying to close the gap that he's about to leave. And certainly really happy for him leaving with uh, this uh, coveted trophy. Yeah, and team, you know, we cannot end this Copa America discussion without talking about what happened off the field. Um, it actually grabbed the headlines. Um, when I saw you post a video earlier today on your social media of Marcelo Bielsa, right? He actually had a long thing to say about the Copa America organizers and how they, they weren't very honest in, you know, different things that he spoke about. He highlighted the pitch conditions. He spoke about security breaches. <coughs> And this was for the third place match, right? So this press conference mm -hmm. was because of what happened in the third place match. Then to see what took place at the Copa America final, I find it so distasteful. And I just want to add, like, I knew a couple of people that would have bought tickets, traveled to Miami to see this match. And there were people inside that stadium having a good time, enjoying the match. And the people that actually spent money to go there could not enjoy the match. So, Juan, I'll start with you, and then we move to Brent. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit on this one, because Carnival just released a statement about 15, 20 minutes ago, saying, oh, by the way, we had nothing to do with that. That was Hard Rock Stadium. We gave them a set of recommendations. They did not fulfill their contract. Number one. Now, Carnival is the same, effort, or the same confederation that, in the midst of trouble, in a Libertadores final in 2018 in Argentina, what does the president of Comable do? He moves the, turn, the, the final to Spain. Okay? Last year, you had fans getting beat up outside of Maracana before the Libertadores final. Boca fans getting beat up by the police. Nothing happened. Oh, it's a great party. It's a great celebration. A couple of months later, Argentina, Brazil, again, play at Maracana. Argentine fans in the stands are getting beat by police. Alejandro Dominguez says absolutely nothing. Ah, let's celebrate. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, you know, suspension, suspension, suspension. Yesterday, there was no security. Fans were allowed to come in. I'm telling you this because I had people sending me messages uh, in DM saying, all you have to do is pay $50 to get into parking. People thought that they could go in and get tickets. They were told that they could get tickets when everything was digital. And you know, when... Fans are getting beat up. Journalists got beat up and arrested. In total, 27 people got arrested out of all the people that ended up going through. After all of that was said and done, you know what Alejandro Dominguez was doing inside of the stadium? He was next to Maluma taking pictures. He was taking selfies with the artist. He was throwing stuff at the fans. While all of that was going on outside of the stadium, the president of Comable was doing that. So tell me who's responsible for what's going on here. And, and again... This, this is me because I had people, I had friends, I had colleagues that were there, and they suffered a great deal of what was going on. I had friends that actually got beat up in, in, by the police there. Yeah. And you had 65,000 fans and only 500 policemen. Please tell me what makes sense here, guys. Yeah, and I'm going to turn to Brent to tell you about this, because, Brent, this is the same U.S. that is set to host the World Cup in 2024, so I'm in. In, in two years from now, sorry, we're in 2024 right now, so 2026. Mm -hmm. But for me... It, it begs the question as to how much is going to change from now till then. Well, one of the first things that's certainly going to change, Comnable is not going to host it. Uh, and it's going to be a FIFA-run tournament. So I'm hoping that uh, the FIFA uh, men in blue jackets had their notepads out and take, taken a lot of notes as to what transpired uh, during the Comnable tournament. As one rightfully said, they've had a history, Comnable, uh, of having these sorts of... Uh, in, indiscretions and, and, and fall aparts. Uh, and this is another one too. It is really criminal what transpired. I've been to several international tournaments uh, and the impeccable way of a nature 
in the way they do things as it relates to security concerns and, and crowd control, etc. Even here in Trinidad and Tobago, where they, they have those sorts of systems and mechanisms in place. We just had an ICC World Cup. A lot of fans obviously complained about the, the, the shuttle service, but there was some sort of crowd control, and that's the point I'm making. How could you look at a final like this, knowing very well what was going to transpire and not have plans in place? And, and, and Juan has mentioned in detail what, what uh, took place. And it's really unfortunate, an indictment. And, uh, you, you know, the questions have to be asked as to, is someone going to be held the culpable for this? I already know the answer. It's no. Because the only thing that was really on the mind of the organizers was the almighty dollar. And that's what exactly happened. That was the most important thing. So that they move on. As I said, two years down the road, the good thing about this is Comnibal will not be in charge of the World Cup. And I just hope that uh, FIFA would have taken note because they would be the ones organizing the 2026 World Cup in North America. Yeah, and the fact is, Brent, um, the USA did host the 1994 World Cup finals. And um, from my recollection, they, they did a reasonably good job there. So um, if, 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 if we accept the fact that FIFA, of course, will be running the 2026 World Cup finals, which they will co-host with Canada and Mexico, uh, maybe we should feel encouraged that what we saw yesterday uh, wouldn't wouldn't happen again for sure in two years from now. Yeah, you, you have to hope that, Lance. And 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 as I said, uh, and, and Juan can bear me out here. He he lives in in, in Florida in Miami, and and they, they host several massive big events, uh, even to the size of or even bigger in some instances. And you've never heard of it, so that tells you right away that the negligence is down to not the state, not the stadium provider but the people that are running the tournament. Because at the end of the day, like any international football tournament, the, the organizers are the ones responsible for the security plan that is implemented. Clearly, when you start talking about the recommended and the recommended, that is rubbish. Because at the end of the day, the box stops with you and come the ball, drop the ball in this one. Not for the first time, as mentioned, uh, but certainly for the umpteen time. Yeah. And, and Juan, I know that some... Concern was directed in the area of CONCACAF as well, but CONCACAF quickly made the announcement that it was a CONMEBOL event and not a CONCACAF event. Your thoughts quickly, uh, Juan, on a 25-minute halftime break, uh, presumably because uh, Shakira, um, as, as hot as she is, um, needed almost <laughs> half an hour to, to, to deliver for the fans. Well, I can't say anything about that because I have people surrounding me, so I can't make a comment on, on her. Um, <laughs> In terms of, of, of that, well, that's because Conmebol wants to Europeanize, Americanize South America. There is no culture for music in, in South America. You don't go and you have a DJ at the stadium. The fans go and they banter one another. They have their own songs. They have their own chant. It, it's not something that you have, you know, and Conmebol just wants to pump music and they want to make a show and they want to make it the Super Bowl. It's not. South Americans aren't about the Super Bowl. They're about their football. It's the same thing as if I go to England in the Premier League, and instead of having the you know fans go and sing, I don't know, Glory, Glory, Man United, or You'll Never Walk Alone, I start putting, I don't know, Daddy Yankee, or I start putting, you know, Bad Bunny when Liverpool comes out. That's not the way it works in terms of the dynamic, in terms of the football culture, which they've completely and utterly destroyed, calm the ball. And CONCACAF, of course, anything for them to be able to wipe their hands off, they're going to say it. Go, oh, well, no, that's it. But they're, gladly, they're glad to take the money, you know, as long as they don't have anything to do with it. So when it comes to that, that, is, that is, that's basically what's going on. And you're going to see it, and you're seeing it right now, that everybody around, everybody from Carnival to Hard Rock Stadium to the, the uh, Miami-Dade uh, Miami County government, they're all passing, oh, no, that's not me, that's not me, that's not me. I didn't do that. Everybody's passing the buck right now until things start coming to light. And, and that's going to be a very interesting set of circumstances to see how the organization. Mind you guys, this, is not only, this did not only happen in Miami. This happened in a lot of other venues, and it's been, it's been very silent. It happened in New York. It happened in Charlotte. It happened in a lot of other places. It's just been very quiet. Now that it's coming out, it's going to be real. It's going to be interesting to see what FIFA starts doing when it comes to all of this because FIFA are going to have to really hunker down in terms of the security facets because 
it seems like the people here in the United States aren't really worried because football isn't their sport. You know, people are like, well, so what? I don't care. And, and the organizers and people that have promised investments are going to half-ass the investments because it's not to their long-term, uh, long-term appeal. It's going to be towards the NFL, towards Major League Baseball. It's not going to be towards soccer. It's not going to be towards football. And that's something that we, being on the outside, have to try and understand because they're not going to be, they're not doing it for the, for the game to grow. They're doing it to fill their pockets. Mm. All right, Juan, we're going we're gonna to leave it there. Um, congratulations mm -hmm. once again to Argentina and the back-to-back-to-back -back -back successes that they've had in the Copa uh, in the middle of that, their World Cup title as well. So um, congrats to Argentina. Uh, tough luck for Colombia, who I guess would look to the 2026 World Cup with their fabulous team to try to redeem themselves. Thanks, Juan. Uh, Brent will stay with us okay. for the next segment when we look uh, across at Euro, which happened a couple of thousands, thousands of miles across the Atlantic. And um, we will go to that after this break. <laughs>